Hi everyone, who are interested with space science and studies from Ankara, Turkey. Welcome to the 7th MIC for Deep Space Science and Exploration. Our team formed from METU and ITU graduate students is glad to present to you about our Deep Space mission to Apophis asteroid. Before to proceed, let us show the outline to be followed during the presentation. If you have any questions on your mind, we'd love to answer all of them at the end of the presentation. Our motivations for going Apophis can be listed as following. Preliminary research about asteroid Apophis, which is a suitable target for a low-cost technology demonstration. First-time detection of seismic effects of Earth flyby from orbit, which might lead to a fundamental discovery with a low-cost microsatellite. The first time in space use of Lazar Doppler Vibrometer, contribution to the future space economy, and asteroid deflection missions through enabling low cost asteroid exploration, raising awareness of space science and technology in Turkey. After listing our motivations, the one might ask that why to go and research specifically about this. The reasons are summarized as you can see on that slide page. Firstly, Apophis is a near Earth asteroid, so it is easy to reach with a low cost mission. Secondly, it has small shape and size. Our expectation is that Apophis will be affected by Earth flyby. Thirdly, Earth flyby can cause seismic activity and tidal effects. So, it is a unique opportunity to test LDV, which is the first orbital seismometry concept. Lastly, we have not enough information about Apophis morphology. Reference images and data from the mission might be utilized for a potential deflection mission for the future landers. Now, since we given our motivations and reasons to go and investigate Apophis asteroid, objectives of this mission can be summarized as following scheme indicates. In details, our scientific objectives include the shape and surface determination of Apophis, which was previously tried from the ground. Now it is possible to improve the quality of this information via using 2U LIDAR and high resolution camera concept frameworks. Another scientific objective emerging from the mission is to understand the effect of tidal forces on the asteroids. So, in order to accomplish this mission objective, surface of Apophis is to investigate it and observe by LIDAR and high resolution camera frameworks again. In first time in space, we plan to deploy a single LDV into our microsatellite system as a technology demonstration objective. Thus, we want to understand whether the magnitude of seismic vibrations due to the flyby-induced tidal forces can be measured or not. This demonstration would also be a milestone for orbital seismometry concept and studies and interior of deep space objects, which can be investigated in future with multiple LDVs. Finally, PARS mission is not only a pure scientific mission itself, but also we desire to foster the social motives of the humanity. In this matter, first of all, the project can be carried out with space agencies and universities to raise awareness and interest of space science and exploration. This will result with increasing motivation and curiosity around lots of young people and children who deserve the qualified and sustainable education. Moreover, since the sustainable double development is possible with investment to the scientific research and innovation, our project aims to provide qualified employment for people and to get investment from the industry. In conclusion, the one is able to see PARS mission is not only a project of a single team, but it serves to the humanity for better and sustainable futures as United Nations Sustainable Development Goals indicate. The concept of operations is developed based on the mission objectives while benefiting from Hayabusa mission plan. PARS will depart from Earth nearly one year before the Earth flyby of Apophis. After the 322 days in the transfer orbit, PARS will rendezvous with Apophis and apply a maneuver to get into heliocentric orbit near the Apophis. In this heliocentric orbit, PARS will accomplish preliminary observations of Apophis during a month. After the initial survey phase, PARS will apply a capture maneuver to get into mission orbit. In the mission orbit, observations will be made in three phases as pre-flyby, flyby and post-flyby during nearly two weeks. 
At the end of the post flyby phase, mission will end. Lambert algorithm is used with different departure and arrival dates while designing the transfer orbit. In the selection of arrival date, mission requirements together with departure and arrival delta Vs are considered and corresponding optimum departure date is determined. In the transfer orbit design, orbital perturbations such as gravity due to sun and planets, solar radiation pressure, and relativistic correction are considered. The transfer duration is 322 days. At the end of the transfer orbit, parts will rendezvous with Apophis at 20 km distance and apply the arrival maneuver to get into heliocentric orbit near the Apophis. In the initial survey phase, preliminary observations such as initial mass estimation, initial shape construction, spin axis determination, and solar radiation pressure estimation will be done and this will take one month. During this phase, parts will be on the heliocentric orbit near the apophis. Change in the relative distance can be seen in the graph. This phase starts at 20 km distance with the arrival maneuver and ends at 1 km distance with the capture maneuver to get into mission orbit. The mission orbit is 1 km circular polar orbit, which is a requirement of laser Doppler vibrometer. Considering the estimated mass of Apophis, orbital period is calculated as 1.7 days. Since it is larger than the rotational period of Apophis, this will enable to observe different surfaces. Parts will enter the eclipse of Apophis three times in the mission orbit and longest duration is 2.3 hours. In the eclipse, parts will be on the safe mode and battery will provide the required power. Scientific observations will be done in three phases. In pre-flyby phase, the first time in space, LDV will start to work. The main purpose of this phase is to take reference measurements. In addition, gravitational parameter will be estimated more precisely and also shape will be constructed more detailedly. In order to maintain the mission orbit against the perturbations, station keeping maneuvers will be applied. In the flyby phase, LDV will keep taking measurements to observe any increments in the vibrations. Here again, shape of the apophis will be kept measured. Gravity of Earth will highly disturb the mission orbit at the closest approach. Therefore, frequency of the station keeping maneuvers will be increased. In the post flyby phase, LDV will continue to take measurements and data regarding shape will be collected. The expectation is that vibration caused by Earth will decrease or end. Here again, station keeping maneuvers will be applied. After the post flyby phase, mission will end. Required key technology for the mission success is obviously laser Doppler vibrometer to be used in space first time. Therefore, when one looks into the figure 7, which is telling the basic structure of an LDV, it is observed that the lens diameter, required power, mass and dimensions are main performance parameters. The design and choice of these parameters are done in systematical approach and the process, process of parameter selection is summarized visually in figure 8. On figure 8, left axis indicates the ratio of received to sent power while bottom axis indicates the distance from the target body. Green lines show the lens radius and red lines show laser power in different wavelengths. In this manner, via the aid of this graphical reference thanks to Dr. Sawa, we are aware we are able to design several design parameters. Mass and dimension parameters are estimated according to the World Space Mission and Analysis Design Book. We have designed a microsatellite suitable for the mission and it obeys all the constraints. The three axis pointing is expected to be achieved with 20 milledegree accuracy. High performance green propulsion is selected as the propulsion system for the main and attitude thrusters. The maximum power generation of the solar panels is determined as 350 watt. The main supported modes consist of observation, communication, orbit correction and safe mode. The cost of the mission is estimated around 35 million dollars. One of the serious risks in our mission is failure in the payloads. Such a failure would lower our scientific or technological outcomes. It's essential to test the payloads carefully and to use flight-proven components. The main thruster failure may cause catastrophic consequences, 
such as crashing the up office or leaving the mission. The attitude thrusters can only help with the orbit maneuver if the spacecraft is in the mission orbit. Our plan is to complete the preliminary design by the end of 2022 and the flight model of the spacecraft is planned to be delivered to the launch operator in early 2028. In this study, a low-cost precursor asteroid exploration mission is proposed. In addition to the scientific observations, it's aimed to have a technology demonstration and foster the space awareness. We would like to thank our dear advisors for their guidance and support, and many thanks to the all participants for listening our presentation. If you have any questions, we would be glad to answer them.